One of my favorite moments on Survivor was the whole like All Stars thing, the whole Boss and Robin Amber oh, thing. Oh hell yeah! I love that. You know, maybe one day I'll you know, maybe I'll find my uh, my Amber on the island. <laughs> <laughs> I came into this game saying no showmances. Literally, one of my biggest things was no showmances. But that doesn't mean I can't have a little fun. <laughs> Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we are only gonna be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. Secret scenes and behind the scenes footage may be included to flesh out the story and all character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that, Who will have what it takes to outwit, outplay and outlast all the rest? This is Survivor 45. D, a 26-year-old entrepreneur from Miami, Florida, played on Survivor 45. And now you may be asking, what is she an entrepreneur of? I will need you to push that question aside as it will never be answered. What I can tell you is that we are now five seasons deep into the new era of Survivor. So of course, we're still in Fiji. There are 26 days, three tribes, and 18 castaways. However, there are some important changes. The episodes are now 90 minutes with commercials instead of 60, and the theme song is back. Finally, during said theme song, which I showed during the beginning of this video, 17 players names appear at the bottom and only one name is at the top, D. Jeff then says, In the end, only one will remain to claim the million dollar prize. I was made for this and I'm gonna play like this is the only chance and it is the only chance. Huh, the game hasn't even started yet and I am suspecting the show may be hinting towards something, though I'm not sure what. You may recall how the Matt chat spoiled the winners of seasons 33 through 44, as I talked about in Jam Jam's video quite extensively, and then showed every example of this during the Survivor 44 Secrets video, but it is now dead. The Matt chat will not be predicting the winner in this season, so keep that in mind. The storytelling is finally changing. Oh, and I need to mention Bruce is back from Survivor 44. Yes, the guy who busted his head open in the first challenge and was medically evacuated is back for his second chance. Katura is also on his tribe, and in approximately one episode, she will hate his guts but let's save that for later. Bruce and Katura are on the Blue Bella tribe while Dee is on the Red Reba. The first challenge they have to do is for camp supplies, and holy cow, the Yellow Lulu tribe is a mess. One member on their tribe cries multiple times and then can't climb a ladder. It's the first day of Survivor and they can't climb a ladder, so it all comes down to Reba or Bello, and... Dee and Drew for Reba. Camp supplies on the line. Dee and Drew making good progress. Drew untying for the win. Get the flint. No! That's, it. That's a great start to the game for D's tribe. And when they arrive at their camp, we hear from Jay Maya how this is a stacked tribe, which is supported by the inspirational music behind her as she talks. So I'm guessing the show is telling us, hey, don't worry, they're not going tribal anytime soon. This tribe consists of D, Austin, Drew, Julie, Jay Maya, and Sifu, who is a nut. Sifu goes full Tony Vlacos by hiding in bushes with D catching him, and she says, this isn't okay, but I know I gotta contain myself. I can't go off on people because I really want to go off on Sifu right now. D says, I'm like a fireball, but I have to contain myself. But speaking of fire, we see Sifu get this fire started for the tribe in a secret scene. And at the immunity challenge, Reba gets second while Lulu loses. Yep, that's it. Lulu is such a hot mess that they eat up so much of the runtime of this episode. We barely get to know D. We'll see if that changes soon. Did you know that Patreon is free to sign up for? Yeah, the place where I give updates, post videos early, and even have you all pick what I make 
now has a free option. Link in the description, you can cancel anytime, and there's a 15% discount if you do financially support the channel for one year. Thank you for your support. Episode 2 sees Sifu taking the next step into not fitting in when he tells everyone that as a kid, he used to punch trees for fun. D is like, who is this guy? But then she busts out a secret that I bet you didn't even expect even after reading the title of this video. You know what always got me fun of growing up? My big toe is way longer than my little toes. So my toes are pretty, it's just that my big toe is just abnormally longer than my other toes. Because it's usually like this, right? But then this toe is like this. Is that like really long? <laughs> 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 Everybody's laughing now, but they won't laugh later when I win based off a of balance <laughs> challenge. That big toe, baby. Let's go. Big toe energy. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> I know. Now the title makes sense. But this story is clearly a setup for something. I don't know what yet, but I will let you know when I do know. Drew and Julie then talk to Dee and say, hey, how about us three and Austin form a core alliance of four? And Dee says, duh, I'm so in. Reba wins immunity and the fishing gear. And Lulu gets smashed again. It's it's embarrassing how bad they lose. So we move to episode three where Dee talks to Julie and says, hey, I think this Reba four alliance we are in with Drew and Austin, it may not be as strong as we are hoping. Since I see Drew and Austin whispering a lot and it's clear they're keeping some secrets from us. Now let's put it this way, just between you and I, uh, Dee is right. They are hiding something from her. So while her and Julie are out walking around. In the peripheral of my vision, I see Drew. Are you grabbing coconuts? And as we get closer, he gets up and he walks away. Cause I'm sure he was like so nervous. We think there might be something over here. Why? Uh, we saw seafood digging, but then he he uh, gave up. They walked in on the digging. I told him yeah. that we okay. found seafood. Like is, right now, I'm just trusting my intuition, and my intuition tells me that something was off between the two of them. Drew is just uneasy, and there's like a worried face in Austin's face, like something's going on. Mind you, this is a game of dishonesty, but I thought we were working together. It kind of felt like a boyfriend was cheating on me, and I caught him cheating, so it's game on. Well, well, well. Busted. Austin and Drew are lucky that Sifu is so crazy that no one wants to align with him instead. At the reward challenge, Reba and Bella both lose to Lulu. That's a surprise. Lulu won a challenge? So Lulu gets to raid the Reba camp, aka steal something of their choosing, and Caleb is the representative sent by Lulu and he takes the fishing gear they won just the last episode. Thanks. But in bigger news, Caleb is a smooth talker who is extremely charismatic and... Everyone sees this, except Sifu, who tries to impress him with his awesome machete guitar licks. I love Sifu. But as Caleb leaves, Drew says, Hey, Dee and Julie, I want to show you that I am loyal. Caleb gave me this good will advantage. But like the safety without power advantage, this basically has no impact on Dee's story and I will not bring it up again. What is important, though, is that Drew is learning from his mistakes and sharing what he knows with Dee to make good with her. But in actual important news, since Drew came clean, Austin reveals he has a beware advantage idol. This will matter. Reba wins immunity again, except this time there is sad music as Lulu loses, which is weird, but hey. They want immunity, so I don't care. Episode 4 brings with it a tribe swap, and for the first time in 5 seasons, we have a bona fide switching of the tribes. And while this is huge for many people, it almost does not affect Dee. She stays on Reba with Julie, J. Maya, and Sifu, and the only new person on their tribe is Sean, the school principal from Lulu. As they arrive back at camp, Sean, the school principal, says, let me tell you some stories about Lulu, which I assume includes how Hannah, the therapist, quit the Lulu tribe so she could feed her nicotine addiction. D says, I like Sean, the school principal, but I need to know if he has an idol or not. Okay, guys, we got it. There's nothing. Guys, I don't think he has anything unless he has it on him. Even if Sean does know we went through his bag, you're at the bottom, buddy. Like, you should expect that we're gonna go through your bag. So, right now, that's like at the bottom of my worries. Devious. This is a side of D we have not seen until now. It was smart to check, and in fact, Sean, the school principal, does not have an idol. We see Sifu rock out with his machete guitar again in hopes of impressing Sean, the school principal, and I don't know if he's impressing them, but he's impressing me, and Jay Maya says, this guy needs to go now. D laughs at the silliness of this, but J. Maya is dead serious. Reba then loses immunity for the first time, and back at camp, D reconsiders what J. Maya said earlier and says, yeah, 
Let's vote Sifu. She says, hey, Sean, the school principal, we need you to pretend like you were going home so Sifu thinks he is safe. They go to tribal council where everyone and their mother know Sifu is going out tonight. And it's being here that I've realized that my true adventure of a lifetime is back home with my oh. husband, Matt. So respectfully, I would kindly ask that when you vote tonight, that you write my name down on the parchment. All four of you can stay in this game. You can be Reba strong. Sean has this persona, but he's so friendly, so gregarious. He puts on this face, right? And he brightens up his voice a little bit and he completely changes. He's like this chameleon that's just constantly changing its spots. So the fact that he's so immediately 180'd his emotions and you know tried to get back on good terms with us just made me feel like he was not being very genuine. Yep, Sean, the school principal, wants to quit the game after nine days. Wow. Like Hannah, the therapist before him, it is nonsensical. And I think Boston Rob would agree, based on what he said during Heroes vs. Villains, that this sets a bad example considering their job titles. He tells Julie to vote Sifu anyways. So, when they all vote... I just got a last minute audible that I'm supposed to vote Sifu. First vote, Sifu. Sean, one vote Sifu, one vote Sean. D, that's one vote Sifu, one vote Sean, one vote D. Sean, that's two votes, Sean. Fourth person voted out of Survivor 45. Sean. Sean, the tribe has spoken. D was on an island voting Sifu, and now he is mad and confused by who would vote for him. He says, who voted Sifu? And he says it many times. D tells him over and over again that I voted Sean the school principal, as her and Julie try to gaslight him into believing it was. Sean, the school principal, even though Sean, the school principal, who quit, told him it wasn't. Dee says she can't imagine being a quitter like Sean, the school principal. I can't fathom quitting. I always go back to my why, like my family. I think about them every single day. I was born in Cuba and I'm an immigrant, so my parents brought my brother and I to the United States. And every time I think that I'm starving out here, I just try to cut that thought out and I say, well, my parents literally starved in Cuba their entire lives until they came to the United States. Like. They had one piece of bread for the entire family, and I'm out here like at least drinking fresh water, and they had to carry buckets on their head up flights of stairs every day. They came from Cuba without having anything. So quitting for me is not an option because I don't come from a family that quits. Wow, only her and Jake of the Bella Tribe have had their emotional backstory shown to us so far this season, and I must point out that winners do not get their emotional backstories cut from the show which multiple people this season will have theirs cut. The storytellers always include the winner's emotional story. We see Sifu still obsessing over that one vote the next day. He's like, who voted Sifu? And people are like, bruh, chill. J Maya says she is so tired of hearing about it that she might as well just jump on the grenade and tell Sifu she did it. Um, what? I mean, that's great for D, but what is J Maya thinking here? D says, all right, go for it, J Maya. I like this plan. Of course you do, D. Of course you do. Then D says, J Maya needs to go. What is going on around here? Am I taking crazy pills? Reba wins immunity in part thanks to D nailing her shot in her first attempt. And in episode six, it is finally happening. They are merging. The pre-merge has been a breeze for D as she has basically not needed to vote off anyone so far. And here at the merge, Reba has six members because yes, Austin and Drew did survive their time on Bello. Bello has five members, which includes Bruce and Katura, who by the way, calls Bruce her nemesis and she hates him. I told you we'd come back to it later. Bruce, my nemesis. He gets to go on this journey. I'm pissed. He doesn't need access to anything that would give him any more power than he already has. My tribe is eating out of Bruce's hand everything he does. And he does a lot of stupid, annoying stuff. I'm just like, ugh. I don't know, who is this guy? And the Lula tribe is down to just two people, Caleb, the smooth talker from earlier, and Emily. Emily, by the way, has been recruited by Austin and Drew. So in reality, Reba has seven members. It's unofficial, but they have them. Austin then says, hey guys, not only do I have the idol from earlier, but I also have an amulet that if we get rid of J, Maya, and Kelly, like we vote them off, it becomes an idol, a full idol. I'll have two full idols. 
D says good. I want Jamaya gone anyways. I swear this game is on easy mode for D. The re before then reunite to dominate the post merge game and they say Jamaya needs to go, which never makes any sense by the way. It actually seems like a dumb move. But then we see a stick bug dancing to a beat Sifu is giving it and I almost forget why Jamaya is such a big target that she needs to go. We then get our bog standard earn the merge challenge which sees D randomly selected to the clearly weaker team. And in a shocker, they lose. What? Who would have thought? I wouldn't. What? No way. So that means only D, J, Maya, Caleb, Emily, Jake, or Kelly can be voted off at the next tribal. D talks to Jake and. I'll tell you the name that I want voted okay. off. Jay. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like shocked by that, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I know because it's Reba. What you, what you tell me to do, I'm, <laughs> I'm down with, man. Voting off Jay, it's not going to burn bridges between Reba, Bello, and Lulu. And Jay wasn't really part of our Reba alliance with the four of us, so sorry, Jay, but <laughs> whatever, it's going to be over and we're going to forgive each other. Dee told me she wants Jay gone. What? No. She said, I would then, like, so there's a lot of animals so, with Jay. Yes. This is perfect for me because if you take out Jay, you're knocking down these sort of traditional Reba numbers. Okay, I get the easy vote that won't burn bridges argument, but Jay and Maya is solidly with Reba. There's no one else who is easy they can vote off. Gatura says, I know someone who is easy to vote off. Bruce! She flippin' hates that guy. Bruce says, why not Caleb? He is a Lulu who we could get off and is a big threat and no one's really connected with him, so no one would be offended if he was gone. Drew tells D, this is the new plan. We're getting rid of Caleb. And at Tribal Council, Caleb is starting fights as he targets the Rewa women. And D says, why would I want to keep you now if you're going to put a target on my back? So they all go to vote off Caleb and... If anybody has an advantage or an idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. All right, Jeff. I'm going to buy a lotto ticket if this works. So, fingers crossed. Caleb played his shot in the dark, which means there is not a vote in here from Caleb as a one in six shot at safety in the game. Caleb, you are... No! Safe. No! Caleb does not count. <laughs> Caleb does not count. What? Caleb does not count. Wow. Caleb does not count. Oh, Caleb does not count. 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 Wow. Caleb negated 11 votes. That's a new survivor record at one tribal council. They go to revote, and since Caleb is ineligible, they decide screw it. Let's get J. Maya off. So sure enough, she's gone. Six person voted out of Survivor 45. Jay, Jay, the tribe has spoken. There are now five Rebas, five Bellas, and two Lulus, though remember, Emily's kind of a Reba. Bruce and Katura openly beef with each other, because remember, Katura freaking hates Bruce. And Austin and Drew witnessed the whole exchange. There is now clearly a rift in the Bella group, and everyone knows it. Jake says the Reba Bella war is coming, and he is prepared. We then see a secret scene where one big happy tribe now. <laughs> ah, so let the infighting begin. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one slip and you're at the bottom and someone at the top will win. We get tree mail and I'm so excited about it because it read that it was something about slipping and falling. And if you fall at the bottom, you're out. And everyone immediately said, oh my God, it's the pole challenge. I am ecstatic. If it's the pull challenge, I am freaking winning that pull thing. I am not getting out of there. I have such tight grips. I have like a long toe. It'll definitely grip inside. And then I have little feet here that I can turn. Like I'm going to pull a parvati there. I'm going to be like chilling. I'm so ready. We shall see if D is right. Jeff then tells him that I know you all want a regular merge vote, but uh, too bad. We're splitting you into two groups and each group will attend tribal separately. Why, why did we merge if we're just going to do this? It's just two tribes going to tribal council then. So when D competes in a challenge that actually benefits from having strong toes. Kelly's out! D wins! Lord, you're her toes! Oh my god! So I saw tears the second you won. What's the emotion? Share. Jeff, I was just thinking about my family up there. My parents, my brother. And like the pole signified like the American dream for me. And I knew I wasn't gonna let go. And then I just kept thinking like, I wanna take care of them, I wanna take care of them. You got this, you got this. Like, I just wanna make them proud, I wanna take care of them. And that's what's important. I have a feeling they're proud. Congratulations, you are safe tonight. Her 
Big Toes did it. They won her immunity. It all came full circle. Two Big Toe size circles. In her group of six is Julie, Austin, Jake, Katura, who by the way hates Bruce, and Caleb. Caleb is so clearly gone next, it isn't even funny. He doesn't have any more shots in the dark, and now D doesn't know this, but Jake inspires with Katura, who hates Bruce, to disarm D by getting Julie out. At the other group's tribal, Sifu is sadly voted off, so no more epic guitar solos from him, but then they all go to vote, and... First vote, Caleb. Julie, one vote Caleb, one vote Julie. Caleb, two votes Caleb. Julie, we're tied. Caleb, that's three votes, Caleb. Eighth person voted out of Survivor 45 and the first member of our jury. Caleb. Caleb, the tribe has spoken. Here's the thing. Katara hates Bruce openly, but she hates Jake secretly because he is Charlie Brown and she is Lucy. He goes to kick the football and she just pulls it up from him constantly. She flipped and Caleb is gone, which is great for T, by the way. But now Bello has a five to four to one lead. The next day, we see the women going, holy crap, we have a six to four lead over the boys, which by the way, I hadn't even thought about a women's alliance happening, but now they're talking about it. And the women are like, I bet the boys are so scared. Now, spoiler alert, the boys are not scared. They're instead talking about tacos. The women then talk about how they want Bruce out since he rubs everyone the wrong way, especially Katura, who hates him. She hates him so much. However, Jake thinks he's on the hot seat. So he makes a play to trick them all as we see in the secret scene. Should I try something? I bet not because he's jumping. <laughs> no. What? Yeah, baby! <laughs> There's no way. He found an idol? I may have yelled sounds of excitement to hopefully fake some people out into thinking that I could have an idol. If you actually found an idol at the last minute, would you scream, yeah, baby, so the entire camp knows? Or would you keep it a secret and play at a tribal and make a moment? I may have lied in this game already, but everyone in this game has lied already. We all know it, it's part of the game. Let's not act sanctimonious about it. Let's have some fun. Hey, it wasn't a bad idea. It just wasn't executed as well as it could have been. A boat then shows up at their camp with a whole table. What the heck? As it turns out, the survivor auction is back and apparently the money they need for the auction is hidden around their camp. This is new. So everyone, minus Bruce, who Katara hates by the way, rushes around the island to find it. D ends up getting the most with $900 and Bruce gets the least with 80. The auction being back is great and all, but Survivor has changed it. So whoever ends the auction with the most money loses their vote at the next tribal, which kind of breaks it in a different way than before because uh, D just uses all 900 of her dollars to buy one milkshake. But in reality, if this wasn't a rule about losing your vote, she wouldn't have done that. Bruce ends up losing his vote instead. And at the immunity challenge, the dumb new era rice negotiations are back. Why did they keep doing this? But this time, four people oh. need to sit out of today's challenge, give up their shot at immunity. In other words, vulnerable tonight at tribal council in order to get this rice. Let me help incentivize you just a little bit. That's your rice. I take it back. They aren't dumb. This was the best rice negotiation ever by far. Take that, Angelina. Jeff going psycho and just stabbing the bag makes it all worthwhile. Bruce ends up winning immunity and Katura hates this so much. She wanted him out. The Reba Four decides Kelly needs to go. So at tribal council, she is voted off five to three. Anyway. Ninth person voted out and the second member of our jury, Kelly. Whoa! Sorry. Whoa. The trap is spoken. I love your pal. Ballsy of Austin say that to her, though it is true he led the charge. Reba now has four members, Bello has four, and Lulu has one. But remember, the one Lulu is basically with Reba. With Kelly gone, Austin now has two full idols. He is stacked. Bruce is mad about Kelly going, but in this secret scene, Dee talks about her relationship with Kelly. I feel so bad for Kelly. Kelly and I had a good relationship. Like we automatically gravitated towards each other. But then at Tribal Council, we all worked together to blindside Kelly. I'm like mixed feelings about the blindside only because we are playing with real people and their emotions and Kelly's passion. You can just tell when she was blindsided how devastated she was. Like, yeah, it hurts. I don't want to celebrate it because I know it it's feels... literally not something to celebrate yeah. because you're messing with somebody's dream. I know. But it does solidify what we do have. I told you three from the start that I'm in it with you guys. 
And if that meant taking out other people, whether it was blindsided or not, that's, I'm in it. I wonder if Kelly would vote for D come a final three. We then see Katura snitch on Kendra. Apparently Kendra wants D out and D hears this and goes, eh, whatever. Now players will say all the time they shouldn't be too confident in this game and also they shouldn't be too paranoid. There's a fine line you have to walk. And I think D might be a bit too casual about being targeted by Kendra here. But then Emily talks to Austin and Drew and says, what if we vote off D? And they're both like, nah, no. Emily suspects she may not be as close to Drew and Austin as she originally thought. However, what she doesn't know and what we learn is that Austin has the hots for D. Yes, he is lusting for D. This comes out of left field as D is not indicated at all that she is interested in him in any way outside of their alliance. Everyone then reads the note for the immunity challenge, which basically says, hey, you're all being split up into groups of three and we're now four episodes deep into the merge and we still can't have a regular merge episode. I, I don't know why. So Austin gives Julie one of his idols just in case she needs it since she's in a different group from him. However, Katura gets mad triggered when she sees her nemesis, Bruce, who she hates, wins immunity again. Back at camp, Drew and Dee decide, screw it, we are hungry. Should we portion it evenly or should we take like extra? I don't care, I'm, I'm a greedy pig. Me too. If he's a free agent, he's trying yeah. to sign a contract exactly. with me, so I got the yeah. money. So yeah. I got, I'm eating the rice. You're at our worst. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you ate the whole thing. Did I really? Yeah. Well, we have some put aside for him, don't we? No, I didn't. We got some rice for you. Some of it burned and wasn't it's a little edible. Burnt, yeah. We did not get some rotisserie chicken, no, but we got a ton of rice <laughs> that Jake didn't eat because we ate more than he thinks we ate. Poor Jake. Dude can't catch a break at all in this game. I know this isn't a Jake video, but just know that at every turn, he's getting screwed somehow. But apparently, what Katura told D earlier has finally sunk in, as D says Kendra has got to go. And that tribal council, Kendra is voted off six to one. Kendra, the tribe has spoken. We are now in episode 10, and Reba has a four to three to one lead. And if one more non-Reba member goes out, then the final four is all theirs for the taking which should be easy since everyone sings a song that Katura finds to be more wonderful than world peace being announced. They all want to vote off Bruce, who Katura flippin' hates, by the way. But what Dee doesn't know is that Emily's trying to unite the four non-Reva members to get them out. I guess that talk she had with Drew and Austin really changed her mind on where she stands in this game. But as long as the people she is uniting together are Bruce and Katura, who, by the way, hates Bruce so much, then this effort is futile. I mean, did you know Katara hates Bruce? She hates him. Emily then wins reward and she takes all of the ladies with her. And at the sanctuary where good things happen, TM, Katara says, you all know how I hate Bruce, right? And everyone's like, duh, you make it so obvious. Katara says, well, my nemesis, Bruce has an idol and he plans on pretending that Kelly stole it, which is all true as Bruce told this Katara earlier because he trusts her, but Katura hates him too much to trust him back. Emily says this season will have a female winner, which has us immediately cutting to the guys back at camp, just being bros, talking about bacon, throwing coconuts, and flexing all the while. Kenny Loggins, hi, hi, playing with the boys, plays in the background. Now, I would play the clip and not sing it for you, but that would be an immediate copyright from YouTube. The women then get letters from home, which makes Dee cry, and in a secret scene, we see everyone say, Bruce cannot win immunity no matter what. It's gonna be another one of those willpower challenges. It's gonna be a very difficult one to win, but one that is necessary to win because, I mean, we can't let Bruce just sweep us out. I can't believe we're doing another freaking holding challenge. I know, challenge. this is gonna be brutal. I think it might be more upper since we did like, yeah, the pole's legs. Uh -huh. I don't know, but it's gonna be brutal, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be perfect for Bruce. Exactly, my thought. Bruce has got willpower of steel. He has got all these life experiences. You know, he was in the army, he was training. He was like a very strong dude, physically, mentally. He's been working out. He's been training for Survivor longer than any of us ever have. Bruce, my nemesis, I'm pissed. He doesn't need access to anything that would give him any more power than he already has. My tribe is eating out of Bruce's hand everything he does. And he does a lot of stupid, annoying stuff. I'm just like, uh, I don't know, who is this guy? With how much content is focused on Bruce on the proper show, especially from Katura's point of view, I'm surprised they even had more scenes that were cut for time about him. At the immunity challenge, Katura gets scared of swimming in the water, so Austin is the one who beats Bruce and gets immunity. Dee says we should get Jake out since Bruce will likely play his idol tonight, which is actually really smart. Bruce might play his idol tonight, which Austin and Drew are totally on board for. So. 
at Tribal Council. If anybody has an advantage or an idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. First vote, Jake. Jake, two votes, Jake. Jake, three votes, Jake. Julie, that's three votes, Jake, one vote, Julie. Bruce, that's three votes, Jake, one vote, Julie, one vote, Bruce. Bruce, that's three votes, Jake, two votes, Bruce, one vote, Julie. Bruce, we're tied, three votes, Jake, three votes, Bruce. 11th person voted out and the fourth member of our jury. Bruce, need to bring me your torch? Bruce, the tribe's spoken. Yes, sir. That works too. I guess we should have seen it coming after all. Gatura is elated, of course, and Reba now has the lead. They need to walk into the final four with. Oh, and by the way, 78% of Gatura's confessionals from episode two until Bruce is voted off. By the way, Bruce is her nemesis, who she hates, were all about him. She only talked about Bruce for like 80% of her screen time. But anyways, I cannot believe how dumb Bella was to not unite against the Rebas. Back at camp, people are baffled Bruce didn't play his idol, and Emily says, um, it's because I tricked him, which blows everyone's minds. And now Emily is target number one. The read before then say, wow, this is too easy. We thought we'd run it all away. We dismantled them. I honestly didn't believe we'd get down to seven unimpeded. I didn't think they'd let us take majority. Coming into this game, I felt like a very calming presence with Austin. And now that it's getting closer to the end, our relationship is progressing. It makes me happy because I feel like he's such a genuine guy. She's the only person who, you know, I could sit out at the beach and just talk with for like two hours about nothing about the game. We're just hanging out, we're laughing. I'm gonna definitely go visit her as soon as this whole thing ends. One of my favorite moments on Survivor was the whole like, all-stars thing, the whole boss and Robin Amber oh, thing. Oh, hell yeah. I love that. You know, maybe one day I'll, you know, maybe I'll find my, uh, my Amber on the island. <laughs> <laughs> I came into this game saying no showmances. Literally one of my biggest things was no showmances. But that doesn't mean I can't have a little fun. <laughs> I will say the Boston Robin Amber comparison is a bit premature, don't you think? But I think it indicates these two reach the final three. Uh, at least from the storytelling perspective, why else would they use this storytelling technique? They've never done it for any other showmance, including Matt and Franny from Survivor 44, who we knew were instantly into each other so much more than Austin and Dee have indicated. I mean, I don't even know if Dee likes him like that, frankly. Anyways, Julie tells Dee that she thinks Drew is up to something and unbeknownst to both of them, Julie is correct. Drew is actively working behind the scenes to vote off Julie. He wants to flip on the Reba 4 right now as he wants his final three to be with Austin and Emily. However, Austin has zero desire to ever turn on Dee because he's in lust with her. And believe it or not, Julie says, I'm not voting off Dee either. Both Austin and Julie pledge to us, the audience, that they are not voting off Dee. That means three out of the seven people in this game will not write her name down or can't because they're Dee. Dee is dominating this game on easy mode. I'm kind of impressed. Austin then talks to Dee and... has a strong movement against her. Against Emily? against Julie. Would not write her name down, just like I won't write your name down. I don't want to write hers down either, but I think even if we don't, even if neither of us write her name down, I think still she gone. still goes home. Is Drew, Emily, Jake, Katura wanting Julie? Julie's my other number one. If I choose to vote Julie out, it's just me and Austin. Austin is trusting me by telling me this information. And, and so far, I've played this game with heart. I'm gonna follow my intuition, and I'm gonna continue playing this game with heart. Well, Austin really is more committed to D than to Drew. If he wasn't attracted to her, then this would be a different story. She has Austin wrapped around her big toe. If he proposes like Boston Rob, he will need to buy a nice diamond toe ring. D then tells Julie the plan and says, you can't tell a soul about this. Play the idol Austin gave you and get someone else out. So at Tribal Council, they all go to vote and if anybody has an advantage or an idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. Jeff, I want to play it for myself. Okay, first vote. Julie does not count. 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 12th person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Emily, Emily, the tribe has spoken. At this point, how does Dee not reach the final three? Half of the cast won't or can't vote her out. Dee then lies to Austin and says, no, I definitely didn't tell Julie the secret plan. 
She even swears on her mom and Austin believes her. And why wouldn't he? He's in lust with her. She then tells Drew the same thing and again, no one questions her. Wow, get him D. Spradlin. She says she is a good liar in this game, which shocks her since she claims she never has a reason to do this in her normal life because apparently she is a saint outside of this game. She says swearing on everyone she can doesn't bother her one bit. And I feel like I'm sensing conflicting statements. If she doesn't do this in her normal life, you think it would bother her a little bit that she's doing it in the game, but what do I know? She also says, I won't tell a soul about this Emily move or I'll be next. Julie says Drew targeted me, so he is a goner. Austin then wins the reward challenge and he takes D and by force he has to take one more person so he brings Katura. While on said reward, We are living so hard right now. This is the best day of my life. When I first got picked for the reward, I was just too excited to think about anything else. But then as the two of them were sitting closer than me and D were sitting, I was like, oh right, I'm a third wheel. Austin's relationship and I are is progressing. Um, Anytime a man tells you something, you should never believe them until he puts actions behind his words. And Austin did that when he chose me first for the reward. He's a cool guy. I like him. I think this is the first time Dee has shown she likes Austin with an action, though Katura being the third wheel is still the best part of this for me. If only Bruce were there too. She loves Bruce. But now it is time for immunity, which has to do with feet, and you know what that means, right? Oh my gosh. It feels so damn good to win. This guarantees me a spot at the final five, which is absolutely insane. But even more than wearing this necklace, as pretty as it is, you know, I wanna go out partying with it. It makes me feel good, cause I'm a woman. And like, I'm going against these men and it's like, I'm gonna give you a run oh, for your money, no. whether you like it or not. No one can stop the powerful big toes of D. Back at camp, D talks with Katura and they both agree. Drew's gotta go. D is taking revenge for Julie. D then talks with Austin, and unlike what he did for her in the prior episode when he gave her the heads up about Julie, she does not return the favor here with Drew. This is what I mean when I say it feels like Austin likes her, but she doesn't feel the same way, not, not nearly to the same level. However, it is a smart move for her game. So we go to Tribal Council, where they all go to vote, and... Uh, this is an amulet that I got. Now it's an immunity idol, but... I don't think I need any, uh, souvenirs, so... Plan this for yourself? I'm gonna play it on myself. First vote, Julie. Julie, two votes, Julie. Drew, Drew, we're tied. Two votes, Julie, two votes, Drew. Drew, that's three votes, Drew. 13th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Drew, the tribe has spoken. Finale time, it is D versus Julie versus Austin versus Jake versus Katura. As usual with these new era seasons, since they reach the final five, they're sent off to a new island. The one scene on Island of the Idols where Rob and Sandra built that behemoth of a shelter. D immediately apologizes to Austin for burning him on the Drew vote, but it feels wholly insincere. Though Austin is not mad, as he clearly likes her too much. Ah, the honeymoon stage. But while Austin takes this in stride, Katura does not. You see, she hasn't been able to properly hate Bruce in a while, and all that pent up annoyance has to go somewhere. And now it's going towards Austin and D. And she says, we need to split these two up and get out D. Austin wins immunity and Katura pitches to Julie to get out D. But we all know Julie is in D's pocket. So she says, I would love to vote off D Katura, but I'm not gonna do it. Katura then talks to D and says, let's vote off Jake. But we all know this is the fake plan. She's just trying to throw D off because she wants D out. But then Austin talks to D and says, hey, Jake just told me he has an idol. And D says, huh, I wonder if he's telling the truth or not. Which by the way, he is, but he didn't show his idol to any of them, so they don't know for sure. So, Katura and Jake talk, and... I really think it should be D. D is always was viewed as a strong competitor. She's won two immunities. She could potentially win a third immunity tomorrow. Of the people left, she's the most likely to win this challenge tomorrow. And then she walks in that jury at final four, Having won three immunities, she takes Austin, and that's one spot left for me and you. If you're 100 percent in on D, we have the numbers. Yeah, D's gone. Okay, We're good. I'm trusting you, Jake. Yeah, I'm voting for D. Say it. I'm, I swear on that, I'm voting for D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'm good. I hope this works. It's the perfect plan. Jake saves himself, and they both vote off D. Perfect for them, but terrible for our protagonist here. Her and Julie then talk, and D says, Julie. Jake might have an idol. And Julie says, hmm, Jake is lying. So now Dee and Julie think he is just blowing smoke, but in all actuality, he is not. Austin talks to Dee and says, 
why not vote off Julie with me? And she says, no, I'm going to vote for Katara. So they all go to vote at tribal council and Jeff, could you validate this for me? <laughs> I'm playing that for Katara. No, no. First vote, Katara does not count. <laughs> yes. Jake, one vote, Jake. Ah. D, one vote, Jake, one vote, D. Julie, that's one vote Jake, one vote D, one vote Julie, one vote left. 14th person voted out and the seventh member of our jury. Julie. You made me swear on Nana, dude, what the hell? Julie, the tribe has spoken. I am sorry, what just happened? What did I just witness? Well, I don't know if you recall, but earlier I said Jake is like Charlie Brown and Katura is like Lucy. Once again, she lied to Jake and pulled the football out she voted Julie. Had she voted D, D was gone. Back at camp, she says, I didn't vote for D because I don't trust you, Jake. The guy who has tried to work with her time and time again and played an idol for her, she didn't trust him. D, on the other hand, is so lucky. Katura is playing a dumb game of Survivor. And I can empathize with Jake's frustrations here. We are now at the final four immunity. And if D wants to not be making fire, then she needs her or Austin win immunity. However, at the immunity challenge, it's pretty clear early on that Austin and Katara are not gonna win this. It's a tight race between Jake and D. So. No, Jake loses everything. D is always was viewed as a strong competitor. She's won two immunities. She could potentially win a third immunity tomorrow. Of the people left, she's the most likely to win this challenge tomorrow. And then she walks in that jury at final four, having won three immunities. She takes Austin, and that's one spot left for me and you. D has won the final immunity challenge of Survivor 45, her third individual win. Survivor has been such a journey for me. Every single moment I stack something up, I thought about my parents and the American dream, and I wouldn't be here without them. And I feel proud of myself. I really do. That is D's third immunity win. Wow, did her big toes help her not break the challenge like Jake did? With immunity in her possession, she decides to put Jake and Katara in fire. She is bringing Austin to final three with her. Now, personally, I would have put Austin on the jury because he's in lust with her and he would be a guaranteed vote for her. And right now, if she brings Austin to final three, Drew's going to vote for him. But if Austin's on the jury, I bet Drew votes for D. And that would be three guaranteed votes. But hey, I'm not on the island playing. This is what happened. D says, I'm putting Jake and Katara in fire. And hey, Jake finally gets redemption and beats Katara in fire. So she is gone. The tribe has spoken. It is now day 26 and in a secret scene, we see the final three get letters from home. Um, didn't D get these earlier in the season? How many letters from home do they have for her? Did the mailman run late to Fiji? They didn't have enough last time. They got more. I, I don't understand. D tells Austin that when he loses to her, she's going to give him a big hug. But for now, she is living the survivor dream. I literally am living the dream. I'm living the survivor dream. Final three on day 26, all I can think is, mama, I made it. Mommy, papi, this is for you. And whether I win or not, they're gonna be proud of me. I am gonna win though, but. <laughs> Final Tribal Council, D versus Austin versus Jake. And by the way, Jake is not winning this thing. Now this story is about D, but aside from Jake beating Katura in fire, uh, he's shown to be like Rocky. He fails at a lot of things, but he keeps on swinging. But like in the first Rocky, he's not gonna win. So it is D versus Austin. And we know D has one locked vote with Julie, whereas Austin has one locked vote with Drew. There are eight jurors, so they need five votes to win since Jake isn't getting any of them. Kendra is the first juror and she says, I want to feel your truth. Now she's not asking for the truth, she's asking to feel their truth. Okay, well, Jake by far answers her question the best and it isn't even close. But Dee does admirably by saying these are the good old days and she is out here for her family. Katura is the second juror to speak and she asks what moment in the game made them feel terrified? And again, Jake gives the best answer. But we all know Katura ain't helping Jake be real. Austin says for him it was voting Julie and Dee says it was blindsiding my alliance. It comes across as a net positive, but not really impressive. Drew is third, and he asks why the Reba 4 was so amazing. Ah, so Drew wants his ego stroke. 
Austin says Emily was the crucial piece to make the Reba 4 powerful and... So, yes, you did bring in Emily, but I also brought in Katora. So this was a communicative effort. And then also, Austin mentioned that the Kendra vote, it was his idea. And I'm so sorry, but the reason was because I kept seeing you go and talk to Austin and Drew all the time at the beach. And then Kendra's out here saying that I have a crush on Austin. And then I'm like, I need this girl out of here because she's bringing in the drama and I can't have her in my game. Dee is not backing down. Julie is next and she asks a softball question about whether Austin and Dee are real or not. And Dee says, my feelings for Austin are very real. Emily then says, I want one simple, concise example of when you used your brain to make a move in this game. My heart and my brain, they're not separate. It's the same. People want to pull these big moves. I don't care about that. The game is going to play itself out. I just need to focus on building my relationships and my strategic moves will come from my relationships. And the biggest strategy that I knew that I would have in this game was just being authentic. Dee, I need to hear from you one succinct, simple example of a time where you made a decision using your brain, not your heart. Based on what Emily said, D dropped the ball hard. Caleb then gets the chance to ask a question and he only talks to Jake. Kelly then pipes in and inquires about advantage plays. Emily says, well, Austin failed to save Drew. I mean, geez, Emily, that was harsh. <laughs> My goodness, but it's true. So D says, Now that the Drew blindside is coming up, I could have let Austin know. But I didn't tell him about that because I knew that if I told him, he would try to save his number one. Even though I didn't find idols, I didn't find advantages, knowing all the information was just as important as having an idol in my pocket. If not even more important, because look at Bruce, he had an idol. I did. You did? Well, damn, Bruce, you should have played it. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you cannot say something like that to Bruce. It's an ego thing with him. Katura is next, and for some reason, she's mad with Jake for not telling her he was gonna play his idol for her. Um, excuse me, you you backed out of multiple deals with him, not the other way around. But then when talking about the Julie blindside, D drops a bombshell. You don't know this, but I did tell Julie. I did tell Julie, I'm so sorry, so sorry. But I knew that she had an idol. And the moment that everyone spread out, I told Julie, everyone's coming for you, but you're not going home tonight. You're gonna play the idol that we found on yourself and we're gonna blindside Emmett. And I still didn't tell him for the rest of the days that we were here together. We're final three and he didn't know. And, and D for what it's worth, I was coming for you next. I know it, I know it. <laughs> Austin looks so hurt. As I said before, and I am standing by this, it looks like Austin's in a her and she just like kind of like having like a flirtatious thing with him. It, they're not on the same level with each other like Matt and Franny were last season. Now, prior to final tribal, we did hear from Kelly about how amazing D is, and then we see Emily vote for her to win. That seems like D might have three votes, but you need five to win. So Jeff reads them all, and first vote: D, Austin, 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 D. Two votes, D. D. That's three votes, D. D. That's wow. four votes, D. Wow. The winner of Survivor 45, D. So let's break this down. How is D as a character? The closest comparison I can find to D as a character in terms of winners is Sandra D as Twine. But unlike Sandra, D lacked the villain to fight with that made Sandra so iconic. D was solid and at times ruthless, and I'm pretty sure she did not like Austin nearly as much as he liked her. If D didn't win this season, I am pretty sure she would have gotten a villain at it. But because she won and Survivor wants you to have that satisfying winner feeling when it's all done, they put in extra effort to make her appear nice while only showing some of her villainous moments and they do it in a humorous light whenever they do or they paint it as a game move. Not everyone gets that kind of edit. Winners typically do. If Dee plays again and loses, I bet you she is a villain. Out of 31 character moments shown on the show, 18 were heroic and 13 were villainous, making D a hero character on Survivor 45. Now, how is D as a strategist? In many ways, extremely lucky, but also she played a solid game. Many people who watched the season live had her pegged as the winner early on just based on the clear dominance combined with all the dominoes falling perfectly for her. Her only tribal in the pre-merge game was the Sean quit, and post-merge, Bello collapsed on itself while she rode the Reba 4 to the finale. By the time anyone wanted to target her, the votes weren't there, or they were named Katura and they screwed up hard, and Dee's gameplay reminds me of Tommy from Season 39, which proves that, above all else, the social game prevails. Out of 63 strategic moments shown on the show, 46 were smart and 17 were dumb, making D a smart strategist on Survivor 45. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. I'll see you all next time.